Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby here with Star of Water for Elephants, Grant Gustin. And you, you know, many people know you as the Flash at this point, uh, but you mm -hmm. got your start in theater. Uh, this is, I think, your first stage role in 13 years. So what was, mm -hmm. was it daunting to kind of come back to this role? What was it like making the transition back to the stage? Yeah, it was something I really had had been wanting to do for a long time. I mean, we had taken... Uh, we'd considered taking stabs at things in between seasons of Flash, but our hiatus was always two and a half months. And, um, and those those seasons were pretty, you know, grueling. They were nine and a half months long and I worked, you know, pretty much every day, all day. And, um, and I didn't want to kind of pop into something for too short of a, a run and um, not really feel like I got to fully enjoy it and um, have real ownership. And, I knew I really wanted to get on stage when um, Flash ended, uh, mostly because I was. It had been so long, and I knew that it would feel a little daunting and um, overwhelming. But I thought that'd be good for me as, as an actor and as a person. And um, but I, I wanted to do a straight play because I was scared to sing again because um, it had been so long. Um, and I, you know, and I was not naive to what eight shows a week in a musical um was going to be like and what that would require of me um but this you know it this just came up at such a perfect time and i was so excited about the the prospect of it just the story and then after i met uh, jessica stone i i knew i i i would wanted to do it and i'd be really really lucky to have the opportunity to do it so i went for it and it worked it worked out thankfully because it's it's been such a pleasure yeah well one of the benefits of doing a, a new piece like this must be you know having the actual composers there Pigpen theater mm -hmm. has such a unique uh sound to their music so did that help with the nerves for singing at all did you feel like you had an input mm -hmm. over where it was going with your voice yeah well i'm you know I, as an actor too i'm not someone that um I, whatever it is that they're asking me to do, I try to do. I like, you know, on Flash, like if like scripts, I'm like, I don't know how to make this work or it's not necessarily where I thought the story was going. Like I see it as my job to, to try to make it work and like not necessarily like change things to fit me better. But having said that, I mean, they they would do things. I mean, that it was fun to be a part of, um, you know, building this character because they would kind of try to fit things into my voice and they would write new they you know we wrote new things and in lion and a couple of other songs um were developed in, during my part of the rehearsal process like the show wasn't locked obviously once i jumped on even though they had done a workshop and the out of town in atlanta already so I still got to do some new like untouched material that they were kind of designing for my voice and and rick ellis also you know any kind of changes that were happening with the book it was to help kind of cater to what they thought my sensibilities were um which was for sure cool i mean m my dream had always been to originate something and um it it's really fun to get to just kind of make it my own and not feel like i'm having to fit the mold that somebody else has already established um so it's yeah it's it's surreal yeah and your character, Jacob, uh, he is running away from a lot of loss and a lot of trauma in his life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, musicals, as, especially as opposed to, to film or TV, are such an economical method of storytelling. And so mm -hmm. they move so quickly that a lot has to be packed into each scene. Was that a challenge for you? How did you approach that, fitting all of that character information in? No, that part of isn't this doesn't feel like a challenge actually that's that's always been one of the things I love about um theater I mean it's one of the things that was actually hardest for me going to tv was telling the story out of order and and you know like shooting scenes in ways where you're like it, it just there's no organic ride that you're on you know and it's always been one of my favorite things about theater it's like every night you get to go on the journey from start to finish and you get to follow the momentum and and let it take you wherever it's going to take you. And um, there is a lot packed in there, but it's, you know, it's it's a two and a half hour show. So it's like still like, it's a marathon. It's like, there's parts of the show that feel like a sprint. Like, I feel like the last 10 minutes of the show when, um, you know, we go into the dream, like once I get knocked out sure. and then we, it's like, 
I, you know, I'm, it's, I'm going on the ride the whole show and then we do that. And by the time the dream ends, I'm like in the wings, like chugging some water before I come on for my final appearance, just like sweating profusely. And, um, so that last little bit always kicks my butt. Um, but it's, I, I love just that it's, it's all packed in there and you get to just kind of go on the chronological like ride of the emotion and, um, the story. It's, it's always been one of my favorite things about theater. Yeah, marathon seems like a good description because yeah. not only is it singing and dancing, but I feel like you're always climbing around the train cars. Uh -huh. yeah. And plus yeah. there's tons of circus going on. So there, it feels like there would be a million things to be aware, aware of. of. Yeah, How do you yeah. kind of keep that awareness of so many technical elements? Yeah, it's so it's like this. See, it's like sneaky physical. Like, I mean, I mean, it's also like, uh, like, a, a obviously, like, apparently physical as well i mean it's the i am climbing and doing and rolling and dancing and hanging from stuff but it's i, I didn't see it as being something that was going to be like inherently physical when i was reading the script and then um yeah jumping into the rehearsal process it started to become pretty uh clear to me that it was going to be quite physical i mean my shins are like shredded from just like banging them on the ladder and the train and i now have like compression sleeves with shin guards in them that i wear for the show because <laughs> i know they're in they're in harm's way every night um it's yeah i don't even w remember what the question was necessarily i'm just thinking about what the physical the <laughs> just thinking of your four shins i'm sorry i was yeah, just thinking no. how, how do you keep you know awareness of all those physical yes technical yeah, elements yeah. while you're there it's, you know, it's been, it's not, it's, it may look um, hectic at times, but it's so, you know, thought out and, and there's like, the tracks are so incredibly clear and like, everyone knows where they're supposed to be on any given moment. And um, there, there really aren't any moments in the show where I know like, okay, keep your head on a swivel here or, or you're in trouble. Um, I, you know, I, it's, it's for as dangerous as everything is that's happening on stage, like it's very, um safe like I feel like we're, it doesn't feel there's no part of the show to me that I'm like scared for anybody's well-being like I know every everyone is so skilled at what they're doing and and every precaution has been t taken to take care of us but um yeah there's it's pretty it can appear to be pretty hectic for sure although you know the high energy moments are really fun to watch but actually one of my favorite parts of the show is uh your duet with Izzy McCalla uh wild mm. because it, mm -hmm. it is comes from such a high energy moment and then we drop into just this really intimate uh song between these two people mm -hmm. what is that like coming from big high energy to dropping into that moment with her yeah that's always fun as an actor because I'm coming out of the scene it's the first time that I leave stage for like a 10 minute period um and so it's like the first time i kind of the whole show actually other than intermission like go to my dressing room for a hot second and i come down off of you've got nothing where like you know paul nolan is doing this it's like one of my favorite moments in the show i mean he's brilliant and his voice is insane obviously um and i love that moment in the show and then it turns into uh the physical altercation between the two of them and then Jacob gets really heated and then I have to get you know pulled off stage so I'm coming off with like some pretty high adrenaline and um and and then per the story you know I'm separated from Marlena for a bit and then I find out where she is I go to check on her and I think I'm expecting one thing when I get to the hotel like I don't know what I'm walking into but I it's this it, I'm thrown by her emotional state and the things that she sang it's not really where I think Jacob's expecting her to be at that point emotionally where she seems to be having this moment of clarity and you know she's such a strong character and Jacob knows this obviously but he's there to make sure she's okay and um and I guess unsurprisingly it's like she has her stuff you know, she's able to take care of herself and she's got her stuff in order and she starts saying things that kind of catch him off guard and it, and it inspires him and gives him the strength to kind of tell her for the first time how he feels and like where his head has been at. And um, it's the first time that he just kind of lets all the walls down and not only tells her like how he's been feeling about her, but also just kind of what he's been through. I mean, I think it's the first time he says out loud, it's kind of vague, but it's like, uh, you know, when he jumps on the train, he's not sure if he wants to 
if he's able to keep living or not. Like he sees this train and the first thing is like, do I throw myself in front of this train or do I get on it? And he decides at the last minute to jump on it and to keep, um, to keep living and to move forward and just try to, because I mean, he's lost everything and he doesn't know what to do next. And, and he kind of just follows an instinct to pick up the pieces and just to decide to try to survive um, given the circumstances. And then he shares that with her for the first time. He hasn't said those words out loud to anybody where, you know, I, it, he says like, I could have ended it all, but instead I decided I chose anywhere and it brought me to you. And it, it's, it's, it changed everything for me and, and I fell in love with you. So it's, I, it's such a, beautiful moment i mean it's obviously the turning point in in their lives moving forward so it's it's a powerful moment in the show for sure mm. yeah i really liked you know how the show can have something that feels so grand like that and yet mm -hmm. i think the three of you chart your journeys together really nicely where you know the the love that um you have with izzy's character feels organic and the twist the the turn with paul from friendly to kind of antagonistic uh feels mm -hmm. organic how long did that kind of take to to chart those journeys together yeah i mean it's it was pretty clear in rick's book um you know what it was and coming you know using sarah's gruen's novel as just kind of the base i mean you you knew what it was coming in and but it's still like every night like that's one of the other beauties of theater like you you know it's like yes it can like become like if you allow it to get repetitive or boring because you're doing the same show for an extended period of time eight shows a week but then you enter these phases where it's like every night you're discovering new details. And, and, and one of the, I mean, Izzy and I have talked about like, there's so much there on the page, but also like the us falling for each other. Like it's in a lot of these unsaid things and like these looks that we're finding with each other and these moments of what starts as friendship and both in us having this connection with wanting to help these animals and, her and training them and me just understanding, you know, with my, my vet training and wanting to be there for them in that capacity. And it's like, that's what initially our connection is. And, um, and it just kind of builds from that friendship and, and you, and, and I, it, it is complicated by obviously the fact that, you know, there's a marriage in there and um, the dynamic with Paul, which, I think I'm discovering more and more as we do the show where it's like, I, I think right away, Jacob knows, like, you know, from the first scene with him and then going right into lion, it's like, something's off with this guy. Like I, like he, he doesn't, I think fully trust him ever. I think then he starts to let his guard down a bit when they find Rosie and they start training him. And, but then there's enough moments quickly where he's, you know, I know like, this guy's dangerous um, and, and he knows to kind of keep him at a distance. Um, so there, there's just all these fun dynamics to play with and discover every night. And I see differently all the time. I mean, um, it's just kind of evolving and, and maybe an audience might not even notice if they see it, you know, if they saw it a month ago and they see it again in three months, maybe it's not, it doesn't feel incredibly different to them, but like you, you find all these small different impulses and moments that, that are really fun. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it happened quickly in the rehearsal process, but again, it's like you keep discovering more and more and more, that, you know, every night and Izzy and Paul are they're such fun actors to work with because they're both so present and responsive. And um, I don't think any of us are like set and like, well, this is my show. I mean, there's a guideline, obviously we follow with the book and, and what Jess has um, laid out for us and all the conversations we've had, but you know, you like any, good actor you like to just kind of like respond to what's happening in front of you and the, and the two of them are um very um responsive and gracious actors that i love working with them yeah and another dynamic is that your character is kind of split in two there's uh greg mm -hmm. edelman playing an older version of jacob did you guys have to talk about ways to kind of like link up your versions of the character <laughs> not a lot actually um i think first of all they like they they talked a lot um about you know before we had even started rehearsal how excited they were that like they felt like they found two actors who had 
similar sensibilities um greg and i and like and mannerisms in a way like i i i look like i could become greg edelman like as i age which is so that part's fun um and you know greg and i we don't talk a lot about um character in that way like we i talk to him a lot we talk to each other a lot but it's usually about like sports or like other you know like or actor things but not necessarily about our character i mean like we we talk about the show a lot and we talk about you know he loves doing what he does and i love doing what i do so we talk about doing this but we don't really talk about the character a lot i I watch him a lot i know he watches me a lot and there's little moments in the show that um uh, like just if something physical is happening that I think we've kind of there's this unsaid thing where like we're trying to mirror each other in certain moments but we haven't really discussed it um so like if if he one night is standing a certain way that he doesn't stand like and it I'll try to kind of mimic it and vice versa I know he's doing that and um and there's a couple of small but like when we go into the menagerie for the first time you see us standing there and um I think we have kind of similar physicalities in that moment. When we see Marlena for the first time, you kind of see us sit in unison and watch easy together. And, um, but a lot of it, I think is just like uh, been like organic and unsaid and, and also as I, you know, kind of started with just like good casting too, (laughs) (laughs) where we'd have similar sensibilities. Yeah. Well, I would love, uh, before I have to let you go, to take you back in time a little bit, because you had this period, which I imagine for you must have felt crazy from like 2011 to 2013, where, you know, you were in the National Tour of West Side Story. Mm -hmm. Almost basically immediately after finishing that gig, you are on Glee. And then not Mm -hmm. too long after that, you become The Flash on TV, which Mm -hmm. is such a crazy uh, rise. And to have all Mm -hmm. those things back to back to back now that those are in the rear view mirror like when you look back on that period how do you think that uh kind of shaped you as a performer um it's funny it's like it wasn't i mean the the west side to glee was so i mean it overlapped that that was really fast so i was like 12 shows away from finishing my my year of tour um when i left i heard somebody recently was like saw um someone that was involved in the casting on that show and they were like i think tongue-in-cheek like joking like you know he's that they let me out like three months early or something i'm like no like i was literally 12 shows away from finishing that tour and they and they did graciously let me leave um but they had a replacement for me for the second year already because i was going to leave after that um so that was like a very tight overlap and and i didn't i i got that because my manager who's still my manager i had started working with when he saw west side of the pantages when we were in la and he tracked me down and and we started working together and i started making tapes for things and glee was one of them um didn't get the first thing i auditioned for glee and then they kept me in mind for for when this came up and they they saw me for it and i got it and i again was almost up the tour so i um flew to LA to film an episode but like I thought it was I didn't know what it was going to be it was just a guest star it wasn't like a planned recurring character or anything um so it there was like a lot of downtime like I did seven episodes of Glee over the course of like three or four seasons or something so it's not like I was like on Glee like I I was I moved to LA and lived in like the room of a small house um with somebody with two other people and um and didn't know how long I was gonna be able to stay in LA and and then started guest starring on I got like a CSI Miami episode and uh I did a Lifetime movie um and then I had a stint Glee kind of went away I didn't do it for like at least a year and then I I did a stint on 90210 for a while um and then like a nut like a couple other random Glee episodes came up and then then it was kind of like nothing for a while like I mean I really was just kind of like it felt like it was all gonna change and then it was you know it was cool I got to be on Glee but then I was like a little bit of a journeyman kind of actor even though it only took like two years of being in LA and not knowing if I could stay and I was about to try to go to New York actually um 
and I, and I, it's kind of unrelated, but like had, I broke my arm in a bicycle accident and it was pretty bad. And, and I was like really down on myself and I didn't know what I was going to do. And then the flash audition came up and I, I didn't want to go because I thought I was so wrong for it. And um, I thought it was a waste of their time and my time and ended up going. And, and obviously, um, you know, I, it, I got it, um, which was, couldn't have been more unexpected. I mean, I, it was, that is not even something I could have dreamed of happening. Um, and then, yeah, it runs and ends up running for almost 10 years, um, which is another thing that you obviously could never predict. And um, it, I, you know, that, th that progression of things, it's like, it's interesting because you'd think it would make you like so confident but I've talked about this a lot where it's like I used to have so much more confidence in myself as like a young artist and then like the way it all happened like you said kind of fast and and like in a weird way and then I was in Vancouver doing this show forever and like and it was an amazing job but like I wasn't doing what I thought I was doing which was predominantly theater and um and and I and it did make me struggle with my confidence a lot because it really put me out there as this beloved character um that I sometimes struggled with like even the years playing like was I was I right for it <laughs> like um and I think it's I have imposter syndrome every time I do something like I struggled with the idea of doing this even after I got the job and um it, it's just kind of it's something that I have to work on um having more belief in myself and confidence in myself so I don't know. I mean, I grew up a lot doing that show. I was 23 when it started, 33 when it finished. So I had a lot of maturing to do over the years and finding myself and like figuring out who I was as an actor. And um, I think it made me a, a much stronger actor because I had to, um, you know, I, I kind of, as I touched on before, like find, sometimes I didn't know how to make something work and you never know where the story is going to go or what the scripts are going to be. And you just have to, find a way to make it work for you and and I had so many different types of emotions obviously and things that they were given to me and all those stories over the years that you know I had to push me and um it yeah I just grew up a lot as a person and it and it stretched me as an actor but I knew I wanted to then do something when it was over that was going to feel scary in a different way because after playing that character for so long you can get you know really comfortable and like secondhand and um and I knew getting on stage and doing a musical would be something that uh, was never going to feel easy on any night, and it doesn't. So um, I don't know. It's like it's. I'm like not answering your question. I'm just kind of like rambling. But it's. Um, I think like doing this career, like I, I'm never. I was talking about this yesterday too. Like I'm never going to be content. I've realized as an actor. I feel more content in my life than I'd ever thought I'd feel like with my family, with my daughter and, and I have a second kid on the way. And like, I, I can't believe that that's my life. And, and I feel a happiness and a peace that like, I never thought I would feel when I was younger um, person uh, struggling with anxiety. And finding peace. And, um, but my career I've realized as an actor, like I probably will never feel fully content or like when I do work that it's something that I go home and I'm like, I did it. That was the best. That That's exactly what I wanted to do. I think I'm always going to be pushing to want to be better and to want to find something that is more challenging for me. And um, so that still when this ends, that's what I'll be looking for next. Something that I think is kind of scary to me and can push me to be a better actor. And um How's that for not answering your question but talking for five <laughs> minutes? Great. I mean, we're we're very glad that the the challenge led you to Broadway uh, and, and this show. So thank thank you so much for for sitting down with me, Grant, and great job in Water for Elephants. Hey, thank you. Yeah, it was good to talk to you. Mm -hmm.